only one main ingredient and your hair will grow like crazy. I can't believe I've taken this long to try this out and make a video about it because this is one of the most researched DIYs you can do and this is rosemary oil. I'm going to show you how to make it, how to use it. Mediterranean cultures have used rosemary for centuries. The research backs this up more than anything else I've ever seen. So rosemary oil has anti-inflammatory properties. It promotes nerve growth, which is the only oil I've ever heard of that promotes nerve growth. And it improves your circulation. We'll get into that during the demo. It also prevents premature graying, dandruff, and dry, itchy scalp. It is as effective as minoxidil or Rogaine, which are two popular prescribed medications that you can take for hair growth and it's even more effective than Rogaine and Minoxidil when it comes to itchy scalp. Two more separate studies have shown that the leaf extract, which is completely different from the essential oil, stimulates hair growth even with balding and alopecia. How to make rosemary oil. So first you want to start off by getting yourself some rosemary. I have a huge rosemary bush. Actually, this is just one of them. In my yard, we use it a lot for cooking, but not so much for hair. But from now on, it will definitely be for hair. So it has these beautiful purple flowers. You don't want to get the leaves that have flowers. You just want to get the stalks that have regular rosemary bush on it now of course you don't have to go in your garden and start planting rosemary and wait for it to grow this is a very common herb that can be found in almost any supermarket or veg garden so just go to one of those areas you can get a couple stems of rosemary and that's what you can use however if you do have fresh of course fresh is the best you can just pick it straight from the tree and the first thing you want to do is thoroughly wash it to get any sand or dirt off of it we don't spray our rosemary with chemicals or anything like that so if you do find one that has chemicals or you're not sure maybe soak it for a little while but just make sure it's washed and completely clean and then what I like to do is wrap it in a tea towel and this is to make sure it absorbs absorbs all the water and the moisture because we don't want any water dripping into the oil so as you see I'm squeezing it squeezing it but not wringing it because I don't want to break the leaves I'm just squeezing it to get out all the water and you can see the leaves are basically completely dry very nice and fresh and green now even if it seems dry I'm still going to put this back into the towel wrap it up and leave it there for a couple of minutes as I prepare everything else just to make sure any little moisture that I can't see can be absorbed by the towel. So I roll it up, put that aside, and now we're going to the stove. We are going to be doing the double boiler method. So first I put the pot on the stove with a lid on just to make sure it boils quickly. And while that is boiling, we are starting to prepare the oil. So I'm using extra virgin olive oil. And when you're using extra virgin olive oil, you should always read the back to make sure that it shows that the only ingredient is extra virgin olive oil. Sometimes there could be a mix. So then I'm using a quarter cup. I always now only do quarter cup measurements in case you want to try this as well try with your oils in small doses so a quarter cup of olive oil and one tablespoon of castor oil now i did say at the beginning that it's only one ingredient and it's because the only main ingredient here is the rosemary you can use whatever carrier oil or oils that you love best and this will still work so you don't have to use olive oil and you also don't have to use castor oil you can use grapeseed oil you can use whatever oil you like so now we are just getting the leaves off and I'm just dragging them down. That's the easiest way to get, I don't know whether you can call them leaves, I guess it's sort of a leaf. And I just pull them like that. And then I'll show you two other ways. The first way is to face it downward in one of these, you know, frying things, forgetting things without the oil in them. And you can just push it through and all the leaves are gonna come off. And you can also do it the other way, which is slightly less effective, but it's still gonna get all the leaves off as well. So here are options. Picking off the little stems one by one is just tiring and yeah, it takes too long. So I just like to do it these ways. And like I said, the oils, the carrier oil does not matter because the rosemary is the main ingredient. If your hair loves coconut oil, use that. If it loves grapeseed oil, argan oil, whatever your hair loves, use that. But for me, what I've been using lately is olive oil and castor oil. I always have olive oil because... It's affordable and I use it for cooking as well. So now the water is boiling by the time I was done with that. And once it's boiling, I reduce the temperature to almost off so that it's just like simmering. 
and then I put this metal bowl over the top because like I said we are doing the double boiler method and the reason for this is so that none of the nutrients from the oils get denatured but we can still extract all the nutrients from the rosemary now the key thing you should do here is to make sure that the water does not touch the bowl that is going to be almost the same as putting it straight onto the stove so make sure that it's just the steam doing the work you want to make sure the bowl does not touch the water even if you use something glass make sure it doesn't touch the water so it's just the heat so you want to mix and mix and you're going to start to see that it's going to become a little bit cloudy and it's not going to look so different but the color will eventually change so i can give you a specific time on how long to keep it but i would say anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes and once it starts to look not as green as it was before and the oil is starting to look a little bit more cloudy you know that it's done so once that done what i do is once that's done i just turn off the burner and I move the oil off the stove, but I still leave it in the pot, as in on top of the pot, the double boiler, until it completely cools. And now this is what the oil looks like when it is done. We are going to strain out the rosemary and I'm going to put this in a glass jar. If you have like a brown glass jar that's tinted, that would be better. But glass is always better than plastic. So if you have glass over plastic, choose that first. And if plastic is your only option, you can go ahead and use a plastic bottle. Now I'm taking my spoon because we do not waste here. And I'm just mushing all that cooked rosemary down to make sure that everything is gone in. And you can see the difference between the one that's been in the oil and the one that's been out. It is almost brown. So now in the oil in the glass, I'm going to put in a couple sprigs of fresh rosemary, about three of them, and this I just want to sit and continue to infuse in the oil as it sits, and this can be stored for about a month, and after about two weeks or as soon as the rosemary changes color, I will take it out of the oil, and this is what it looks like. You really don't have to do this step, but to be honest, it's also very aesthetically pleasing, so now we're going to go into how to use the rosemary oil. So first, I always moisturize my hair before I oil my hair, and that's because I don't want to risk sealing in any dryness in my hair. So my hair is currently in braids, as you can see, and I'm just lightly wetting it with my Infinity Spray bottle. It is just very damp. You cannot even say it's wet at all. And I just work that into my hair. I have low porosity hair, so I find that doing this helps my moisturizer absorb into my hair very well and not make any clumps or not absorb properly into my hair. So once that is thoroughly worked in and my hair feels nice and damp-ish, I go ahead and take a leave-in. So you can use any very light leave-in. It doesn't matter if your hair is in braids or out. I'm using the African Pride Miracle Leave-In. And I'm just rubbing that between my palms. You can see it almost disappears it is super light and I just go all over my braids to be honest when my hair is in braids it is prime time for me to enjoy testing out oils and using oils more often because I don't I don't care if my hair feels a little bit weighed down or anything like that and it's also easy to wash out so if your hair is in braids or cornrows use this opportunity to use oils a lot so now for my ends I'm using my Amica the closer and this is just something that's really good for your ends. Again, this step is optional. I like to take care of my ends even when they're in braids. So this is something that's really good for just protecting your ends and sealing them in. But if you don't want to do this step or you don't have this product, you can always just go ahead and put a little extra leave-in on your ends. Or you could just skip the entire moisturizing stage if you like, if your hair already feels moisturized. This is just what I tend to do. And look how moisturized those ends look. Yes, my hair looks really good. So now this is perfectly prepped for the oiling stage. So this is what the oil looks like. It is still in the bottle. This is the same day. And I'm using this dropper to pick the oil. And if you want, you can decant this into another bottle that already has like a dropper. So it's easy. But I wanted to continue to infuse in the bottle with the rosemary. So that's why I'm using it with the dropper. And you need very little of this oil. Trust me, it took me about three droppers full. Or let me just say two because the first two I did were like half. About two full droppers will do your entire head. And this is where the shocker comes in okay i was completely shook i have never experienced an oil that is not peppermint or tea tree oil like this before i did not add any essential oils it is only the rosemary and the olive and castor oil 
and what I started to do is just work it in it is very nice it's not too thick it's not too light but it just has the perfect hold to go on your scalp so you want to make sure you put it between every line get it on as much surface area on your scalp as possible without using too much of course unless you're using it like a hot oil treatment you can absolutely do that but just make sure that's your wash day so once I have scalped my entire head I go ahead and do my hairline because you know the edges are very delicate you always want a little extra oil there and we wash our faces every day with soap so you can get away with using a little bit more oil on your hairline and then under my braids at the back I always make sure to never forget that area because it's very easy to forget that and now it is time for a scalp massage I've always said this with whatever oil you use whether it's a basic oil a hair growth oil a miracle oil whatever oil you use if you do not do a scalp massage after you are losing out on a lot of the benefits the scalp massage is extremely essential because it really adds added stimulation to your hair growth and it helps the oils absorb into your hair as well as making your scalp warm so that everything can work at its maximum potential now it is at this moment when the shocker hit my scalp was like tingling and refreshed that feeling i love from peppermint and tea tree oil I had no idea that rosemary can do that and that's probably part of what it does when it's adding to the stimulation of hair growth and I love oils that do this because it feels like it's working because it actually is of course you're not going to get overnight hair growth but it's just very satisfying to actually feel something working so once you're done with the scalp massage you're going to feel that your scalp feels so refreshed and moisturized and trust me if you use this once a week you will see major changes now if you want just a little bit of extra an extra boost to make sure that this works faster than possibly can Go ahead and put a plastic bag over your head and go under heat for 20 minutes. So I was there with my little portable dryer. I went under heat for 20 minutes, took it off afterwards and just let my hair air dry, which is, it's basically like 95% dry, but it just works so much better. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what else you want to see. Hit the subscribe button and watch my older videos. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.